This is part three of our videos we are taping here at the Panerai headquarters here in Neuchâtel in the Swiss Jura. If you have missed either part one or two, don't forget to watch it and to discover everything we were able to film and show you. Come on with me, let's go in there and discover all the things Pana is able to do here at its headquarter. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. So after showing you production, production and production, cases and movements. Fred and me have come to the assembly lines. There are two types of assembly lines. The more complicated or complicated movements, auto lingerie movements are done by one watchmaker. So he gets the entire kit and assembles the entire watch. But here, Fred, work is spread over different parts and each of the watchmakers, they have their own tasks exactly. to do. Exactly, there's different kind of movements that we assemble here. So there's, well, simple hour and minutes movements or with poor reserve indicators, uh, with uh, a question of time also. Uh, and so, well, the, the assembly process could vary from, well, I would say half an hour to, well, several hours. The assembly of a movement is, uh, is quite simple. We're gonna well, start by, well, winding components, so the crown, the barrel, and after we're gonna put the gear system, the train gear, and with the bridges, of course, and well, in the end, we're gonna put the regulating system, the balance wheel, of course, lubrication, so yeah. different kind of oils, yeah. and we're gonna set the movement, and as soon as the movement is set, we can control it. Fred, we have just been also talking about oiling. Mm -hmm. Oiling was always a very delicate process in the watch industry because too much doesn't do it and not enough doesn't do it either. And so this new generation of automatic oiling really gives oil where it needed and at the right place. This is exactly that. So we want the specific type of well, oil lubrication depending on the viscosity, depending on which gear we're going to use or lubrication. And we have to define exactly the position of the oil and of course the quantity. You can see the position of the oil with a perfect quantity and you can see also there's three different types of lubrication with different kinds of viscosity. After the oiling we've just seen, the completely assembled movement gets in this testing machine here. Absolutely. Well, yeah, controlling machine. So the first process that uh, this robot arm is going to do is uh, putting the movement, oh, as you can see here, into a, a winding process. So we're going to wind it up. Okay. So it could be a manual winding or automatic winding. So manual winding here or automatic winding, as you can see, so the turning plight with the movement. Yeah. And we're going to fully wind it up, the okay. movement. And uh, as you can see too, there's different colors around the movement. So there's green, yellow, and even purple colors. And each color is uh, a different kind of movement. So the yellow ones are, I think they are P900. The green one are manual ones, so they should be P5000 ones. And uh, after we have winded all the movement up, we are going to check uh, the chronometry of the movement. And we, of course, we have to check the pore reserve. As you can see, so there's, um, as we call it, a Vichy. So there's like uh, a tool which is going to listen yeah. the beat of the movement. And we are going to read the precision okay. of the movement yes. at the beginning. And after, well, different hours or after different dies yeah. to control the, the performance of the movement. Uh, until the end of the power reserve. In how many positions are you testing here? We are testing the movement, as you can see also, the movement turning uh, in the machine in uh, six positions. Six positions. Yes. Can I ask to what position you are testing? Is it COSC? Well, it's equivalent of COSC. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's minus yeah. four plus six seconds. Exactly. Okay. Yes. 
So we're really lucky, guys. We do have very prominent guides here at the Panerai Manufacturer. It's Anthony Serpi, who is Head of Research and Development. Anthony, very good to have you. Um, this is a piece of material I have in my hands. It's Carbotech. That is from the Laboratorio di Dea, as you say. And this is your workspace, more or less. But you are also very much involved in the process of engineering and, and working on the materials. Exactly, exactly. So this is Carbotech. This is one of our iron material. So it's very unique in yeah. a sense that it's a carbon fiber embedded in a peak matrix. Peak is a very iron polymer. And basically, with that, we can get materials that are super strong, very light, and with this uh, very nice uh, black, uh, black look. A few words on how it's made. So we start from carbon fiber, unidirectional, and we embed it in a peak matrix. Then we take this type of sheet and we compress them into this type of material. It gives this uh, very unique uh, pattern, very laminar pattern that we like at, uh, at Panerai. Out of this type of plate, we water cut blanks. So here we have the first operation when we start with this blank and we machine the bezel out of it. We machine it at a 13 degree angle so that we can make the inner structure of the Carbotech appear. And you have this very unique pattern with the layer appearing at this specific angle. But how long is the operation then lasting until it is getting uh, the bezel? Yeah, it, it's, it's quite a unique material, so we, we machine it uh, pretty slow, I would say. The first operation, just to get uh, the, the piece that I show you, yeah. takes around nine minutes, for example. Okay. And then we have three more operations to remove this uh, bezel from, from the base. Okay. And the angle, I, I did I clearly understand this? You choose an angle to better... To um, better tease the uh, inner structure of the material. So, as I mentioned, we have unidirectional carbon fiber. This is quite specific to, to Panerai. Huh? You see quite a lot of carbon fiber in the watchmaking industry, but we have this very laminar pattern, which is unique to us. And on the bezel, we make the choice to machine at a specific angle so that you can see the layer of Carbotech that are revealed uh, on the bezel. And this is how it looks after it's polished, where you clearly see the, the carbon layers pattern. You see slightly different color from one layer to the other. It's just due to the orientation that we change when we consolidate the base plate. And as we just talked before, it's unique. It's really unique. Yeah, yeah it's great. Also, in terms of design or what you get on your wrist, you get your unique uh, Carbotech look. Exactly, exactly. So it's not only Carbotech. We have a lot of other unique high-tech material, I would say. For example, we have BMGs that stand for bulk metallic glasses, which is also a super strong material, which is amorphous metal glasses. We also have uh, pre-printed titanium. Here it's very interesting to see the, the part that is uh, printed, first printed with a hollow structure to lighten it and then uh, remachine. So you cannot see that it's, uh, it's really printed anymore, but it's, uh, it's lighter than the original version, I would say. And, uh, and we have a lot of other material on which we are, we are working. So it's always a pleasure to be here in production because uh, that's really where you can see uh, the ID taking form into a product and see how it works, what, what needs to be optimized and, uh, and, and the realization of this, uh, this material into the product. It's, uh, it's always, a, I would say, a, a very strong feeling. Back with us is Jerome, our guide for the next part of what we are going to show you. This is the encasing. Yesterday, Fred showed us how the movement are assembled and tested. Then they get out and now they are being assembled here. And this is the process we are just seeing here, that she's assembling a Carbotech case. Yes, absolutely. Uh, encasing is a, is a key uh, step because we have to secure the quality of the final product. So avoid dust. We have a lot of black dials and dust appears as a, as a problem immediately. You see it very easily. So first remove every dust, adjust the hands and the dial on the movement, then the movement in the circle, and when the circle is screwed into uh, the case, we close the case, and then uh, the watch will be tested for the final checks. Mm -hmm. 
in here we already see the ready movement with the dial and the hands. The hands are set separately. Yeah, it's an setting. operation just done before okay. by the same uh, person or her colleagues anyway. Depends on the flow we choose. But that's the same metier. So these kind of people, they are all polyvalent. They can do both dial and, uh, dial and hand setting or encasing. Okay, what are the next steps? Nothing, step? it goes directly, directly? Okay. at the final control where we will redo the power reserve control mm -hmm. third time and then we will also emerge the watches into the water like we will see. So after Jerome showed us how the encasing is done with the fully assembled movements, I'm back with Fred. Fred, good to have you again. This is the department of oud horlogerie, or exactly. highly complicated watches, mm -hmm. and the workflow here is a total different one. Absolutely, this is totally different. So we've got another process here. So we've got high skilled watchmakers here, and they are assembling, of course, the movement, but they are also putting the movement into the case or in charge of the both everything. domain, yeah, everything. So they get the kit, the entire kit, yes. case, movement, everything, and they, they assemble the entire of the watch. watch. And, uh, they assemble the entire watch head. Exactly. The idea here is not a, it's not a production with even the robot that we have seen before. It's now it's only hands. Um, here we can see a watchmaker assembling one of our novelties. So this is uh, the P4001S. So this movement is inside um, the Brabus uh, watch. So this is, this is a, a really special movement. So we've got an automatic movement with three day power reserve. And we'll also have um, kind of a specificity. We've got a polarized date desk. This is a, well, a marvelous movement that we developed a few years ago and it is only released now. Okay. Take years to, uh, of yeah. practice to be able to, uh, to yeah. be part of this team. I, I imagine, yeah. Here we can see um, assembled the most complicated movement that we have at the manufacturer. So this is a, a mini repeater. So we've got uh, really few watchmakers that are able to assemble this kind of um, marvelous product. So this is a tourbillon and mini repeater. And well, it takes a long time, a long process to assemble, of course, the movement and well, set the case uh, to this movement for the, the sound. Fred, you're the master, but um, would you say, I assume there is some I room for... Yeah, I think that, yeah, the, the sound is not accurate, yeah. I would say, so we have to still work on, on this movement yeah. to, to be sure that the movement sounds perfectly for the final watch. Yeah. We just picked out one that is being assembled to be able to at least film it, but not yet done, and uh, the one that will be sold will okay. sound definitively. Of course, of course, yeah, it's it, will in sounds, it will sound differently. And yeah, it's a working process. It takes a long time to, uh, to set the, the, the tone, the tone perfectly. Yeah. So, and um, the speed? Exactly, well, yes. Tone and speed. Okay, so let's give it back to the watchmaker <laughs> so he can continue his work on the movement. Fred, I just discovered on the Brabus watch where we have been seeing the assembly that the date disc is not visible. That's What's true. the magic here? <laughs> yeah, well, this is um, a trick that we call uh, polarization. This is um, something that is quite common in sunglasses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know polarized glasses, yeah. Exactly. Well, the idea here is uh, we've got uh, a day disc which is polarized and only in one specific spot in the watch, the date window. Yeah. Under the date window, we've got a, a polarizer which is going to reveal okay. the date from the date disc and only in this position, and we can still see through the day disc everywhere else. That's great. Looks like a little LCD display. Exactly. <laughs> but it's mechanical. But there it's no mechanical, battery. there's no battery, there's no LCD, it's just uh, optic. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Just about 10 meters behind us is that huge automatic chronometry testing machine called CLR. But you're really taking it seriously, I think, because 
once the movements are encased, you retest them in a new cycle here. Yes, and in reality, we had it in between a third test. So first one is the movement. <laughs> yeah. Second one is the watchmaker that you just saw encasing. Yeah. And he does an individual test on the Vichy small machine. Okay. And then this is the third and final test. So we redo all the complete power reserve cycle, the six position, the accuracy, amplitude, and all this to secure the specification of the watch because we also are one of the rare brands displaying this information to the customer. So when he buys a Panerai, he gets the booklet with the real performances of the watch the day it left the manufacturer. Fully encased, ready to sell. Absolutely. Oh, but this makes a huge difference because some just uh, test the movement but not the encased movement. And in this case, you are really showing to the client, to the final client, the results that are tested today actually here. That's correct. And just before going on strap and buckle assembly, we will have all the waterproofness test, which is also something of the highest importance for us due to our history, our DNA, and we will also now have a look on it. So now uh, our colleague is uh, uh, starting the air test just before going into the water, which consists in inflating air uh, on the 10 uh, lumina that you just saw, and then we will retire that air and detect at the same time if we could potentially have a micro flow of air in the watch. We do this before going into the water because it's better to detect this at this stage than when we are in the water test. Okay, so right after the chronometrical tests, when the watch is okay, we saw the air test, and now it's time for the watch to go into the water. Uh, waterproofness resistance is a key topic at Panerai and uh, it's for us very important to secure that point for the customer. That's the reason why we will emerge 100% of the production into the waterproofness limit communicated to the customer plus 25% security to respect the standard norm and ensure a complete waterproof resistance for the watch. So we do now have a final assembled movement, a final assembled case, tested, tested once again and again, waterproof and everything is done. But there's one thing missing, the bracelets. Yes, exactly. The, the role of this person behind you is to set the buckle on the strap, the strap on the watch, and put this small plastic protection that you see here to avoid scratches. The customer likes this kind of cap and protection, that be, and they use it on a daily basis to protect their watch. I have one at home too. Several, even. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we also introduced an ultimate check. It's a visual one, so they have a picture, a reference picture of okay. how the product should look like. And they just have a deep look on it and just secure an ultimate time that the one they have in hand is completely compliant to the reference picture. Two days of intense filming here in Neuchâtel at Panerai leads, in the end, to ready watches. And <laughs> Jerome, I think this is the moment you um, always wait for, that you can say, okay, we have another production, 100 or I don't know how many pieces you ship in a container ready to go. Yeah, that's a daily process. The customer are expecting those watches, so yeah. we do not lose time here. You're right, indeed, now the production process is over. You saw everything. I don't know if you have any additional question to ask. I was surprised to see all you were able to do. Chapeau, huh? I have to say. Heads off. Thank you. Not Alexander. bad. And uh, yeah, thank you very much also for having us, spending all the time with us, guiding us together with Fred and Anthony and all those who guided us and, and helped us doing the video. Fantastic. Thank you. That's a proud work. <laughs> Ready to ship watches. And uh, I don't know where they go. <laughs> they go first to the distribution center in villars sur glane and then they will go. They will go the worldwide. The world. Yeah. So this is the happy moment of, you see him smiling, <laughs> the CEO is smiling. <laughs> this is when he is saying, Work is done, let's go. And then they go here through the door, there is a truck coming, loading them, and yeah, they go their way. Exactly. Some of them come back for service. In yeah, years. regular service. Regular because service. Because we advise the customer to take care of their watch as much, as much as they can, and after six, seven, eight years, they are invited to, to have a complete service on, uh, for the yeah, watch. And you have a huge uh, department also for after sales service, I saw it, yeah. Customer yes, and we, we even reinforce the customer service because we offer the two years guaranteed, which is standard, plus six additional ones if you just subscribe to our program PAMGuard, 
That's a reason why we now proactively invite them to come back for the service, which is quite new in the watchmaking yeah, yeah. way of thinking. Yeah, and even if you think sometimes that a watch doesn't need any service, it does. From time to time, it should. At least, at least, guys, if you're using a watch, and uh, especially a Panerai that is supposed to be waterproof, let it be tested once a year. That's no big, no, no big deal. Can be done easily at a off-res dealer uh, boutique. You make a, a water tightness test, and so you are safe to wear it. Uh, everything else is being taken care of by professional watchmakers, but this is, the, I would say, the least you have to do for your baby on your, <laughs> on your wrist. <laughs> Jean-Marc, thank you very much to have us. Thank you to all your team, first of all. They did an incredible job with us uh, these uh, last days. Uh, and I have to say, yeah, wow, I'm impressed. So you enjoyed. You enjoyed and you discovered yeah. some of the métier of Panerai that uh, despite yeah. you know the brand very well, you didn't know so far. I didn't expect to see everything under the roof here. Mm -hmm. So, um, because, yeah, as many others heard uh, and, and have been reading things about uh, you are not uh, doing this and that it, at the headquarters and I was able to see now everything and I have to say, yeah, <laughs> it is there. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. And we receive all the marketing stories and design from Milan because our, our designers are based in Italy, like, as you know, but here, from the design up to the packaging, all is made here. And as I've told you, it's open to any of you who are listening uh, Alexon today and uh, you apply to any of our 200 stores and we'll mo be more than welcoming you uh, in our manufacturer today to show you exactly the same uh, steps than what we have shown to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Alexandre. We have today different foreigners who are here today to visit the manufacturer from America, from, uh, uh, from Austria also, from uh, uh, Germany, from France, and uh, we will come here more or less 2,000 persons every year. It was fantastic because I, I choose and said, okay, machine here, what, uh, what is the machine doing? And then, uh, I don't know, Jerome or Fred or, or Anthony, who was beside us, said, okay, let's look what is done here. And we discovered, uh, yeah, movements, we discovered cases, uh, different parts uh, that are done here. And I was really amazed. So I, it's impressive. I like your watches. I have to say, uh, frankly, I am a fan of Panerai. I have several of your Thank watches. You. Thank I will you. be, yeah, following, continue to follow what you are doing in the next years. And uh, yeah, all those... Oh, um, Yes. All those who have been criticizing uh, interviews because I wasn't too tough enough with uh, the CEO. Uh, forgive me. I, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> to be no, we, that. there's nothing to hide. You can uh, you can uh, trust us uh, that um, it's impressive here. Yeah, it's impressive. Thank you, Alexandre. Thank you. You're welcome. And thanks again to your teams. Um, um, they did a very nice job. And I was happy to have really the guide, not... One guide, so guide. COO yes. and the head of uh, movement production, head of R and D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guides. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I can't promise you that. Uh, um, they will all be available when all, you come. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll try. We'll try. COO you know? and head of the manufacturer, Jerome Cavadini. If he will be, he will be probably here and say hello. But if he would be your guide, I'm not sure. But <laughs> little advantage of being watch advisor. This, uh, yeah, this is a nice final word. Uh, being watch advisor, we say bye bye. Thank you. Once again. Thank you. Has been a pleasure as each time to welcome you. And discover these videos.